Yes, thank you. So uh, I would like to uh, present my research that I'm currently carrying out at, as the master's student at my home university in St. Petersburg. And uh, this is the, the research about the ethics of artificial intelligence and how this problem is addressed on the level of international organizations and the European Union in particular. It's quite a theoretical, so unfortunately I don't have such an exciting um, visualization, but I still hope that you will uh, be, that you will share my interest to the topic. So um, the aim of the study is actually to propose a way of approaching the problem of ethics of artificial intelligence in a way that would be effective and um, acceptable for everyone. And uh, as far as um, as far as artificial intelligence is used across the borders, and the spheres of uh, possible implementation is uh, well. It's almost unlimited. I don't think that the problem can be solved at the level of, at the national level. And uh, a strong international consensus is uh, required and such a consensus requires a solid normative basis. So uh, in search of such normative basis, I turn to the concept of uh, normative power Europe and uh, the ethical power Europe as its extension. But uh, let's start from the beginning uh, and methodology in the first place. Here I follow the constructivist approach which is common to political science and social sciences. And uh, the main method is the discourse analysis of the European Union's official discourse and the rhetoric uh, on the topic of artificial intelligence, mostly from the point of European and Russian academic discourses. Um, and also I use the scenario method um, to show actually the possible steps that could be done to solve this problem. Um, so yeah, um, when I was studying the, the, uh, the, this, these works regarding the topic of uh, artificial intelligence as ethics, I found out that uh, mostly, roughly speaking, there are two approaches to ethics. First uh, refers to the um, like consequences of the implementation of artificial intelligence on society, on nature, and etc. And the second uh, is the problem of uh, kind of an inner ethic that philosophers usually call the moral agency. Uh, and so uh, the the works in the um, philosophy and. Uh, those works that refer to the moral agency, this problem, they say that um, moral agency always requires a certain level of self-consciousness, uh, self-awareness, and uh, al also the ability to, or the awareness of possible conse consequences of one's critical decisions. But as far as we know, uh, current existing uh, architectures do not provide enough complicity to um, well, for any machine consciousness to arise, not let alone the uh, self-consciousness. And for that reason, we cannot say that uh, artificial intelligence can become a moral agent, but there is um, a point of view that, for example, uh, Brozhek expresses in his latest work that uh, moral agency always, a um, very important uh, condition for moral agency is the recognition. So in other words, if, for example, an artificial intelligence is considered <coughs> as a moral agent by society, then let it be so. It just has to follow some ethical principles, which I call the ethical algorithms. Um, it's just the ethics, which is um, uh, in a mathematical uh, language, which can be understood by the machine. And uh, of course, these ethical principles must be universally shared. And here is where the, you know, uh, the European Union enters the game, because as I said, we need a normative basis. And uh, I think that European Union is the normative basis uh, because it is an international relations. It is a normative power, which means that uh, European Union has the ability to shape the understanding of norms, of what is normal and what is not. Um, by its uh, like a positive example. And a very important uh, thing here is the uh, inclusion, which means that normative power is only effective if the recipient of norms willingly incorporates them. 
Um, and uh, another thing is the ethical power. It's more about the proactive work to change the world in accordance with uh, one's uh, a vision of uh, universal common good, but in both cases, we, uh, in both cases, the main um, uh, values that underlie these processes are the, the values of tolerance, multiculturalism, the respect to human rights, and uh, these same values are also uh, true for the United Nations organizations. So, for that reason. I say I, I think that um, one of the ways uh, how the uh, these norms and ethical power Europe proceeds is that it proceeds through the institutions of the United Nations Organization, and that's why European Union has also a solid institutional basis. So uh, because of that, all all of that all, all that I have mentioned. I think that the initiative of uh, creating such uh, ethical algorithms and posterior implementation it on the in, in different laboratories across the world that are developing uh, artificial intelligence systems. So the initiative should come from the European Union. And uh, as a sort of conclusion here, I propose possible steps that could be made. Mm, because we, of course, need um, a committee that would be international, so that uh, the interests of the whole uh, international society are presented. And uh, I think that uh, also the spe specialists from different spheres should be included in this uh, committee, starting from the developers and uh, finishing with the ethicists and philosophers of science. And uh, finally, these ethical algorithms should be, of course, ratified by some kind of a international treaty and implemented in the laboratories worldwide. And this is how I think we could prevent negative consequences that we usually, we the humans, usually face when we develop some technology and do not know how to handle it. So, uh, as, as I said, the research is still in progress, so I, I very welcome questions and advices. Thank you for your attention.